EMZ TV. This is Dutch, your host for today, and here we have a special. We got Mickey. Introduce yourself, man. Oh, my name is Mickey. A lot of people know me. Um, I'm from Hookah Place. This is our store here. We have a uh, great variety of flavors. You got everything. I mean, I looked at the place. I mean, if you're looking for some hookah stuff, this is the spot to be. What's the address here? Let them know. It's 1384 Northwest 29th Street, Miami, Florida, 33170. Also, you guys can follow me on Instagram, Hookah Place. Also, my personal Instagram is Mickey Hookah. You guys can check us out there. All right, guys. Here we got David. This is your man to ask any questions about hooking up the hookah and everything. He's going to be answering some questions today. So, David, let us know what you're doing right now. Well, right now, I'm just putting my coals on top. We have some specialty coals here at the hookah place called Cocoa Piece. Nice. We're cutting three pieces made out of um, coconut shells, of course. Very well done. They last forever in a day. You could probably get up to about almost two hours of smoke time. So if you're playing Madden, it's about two games of Madden, you're good to go. <laughs> nice, I like that explanation. Right, so these are made out of, out of coconut? Yeah, coconut shells, coconut nice. shells, compressed coconut shells. They're cleaner for you, they're healthier for you. Rather than using the quick lights, which has a lot of accelerant and chemicals. Some of you guys that might smoke hookah, you might be experiencing headaches. That's where that's coming from, that accelerant and quick lights. Go with the coconut shells, the our natural solution, trust me. Uh, that sounds good now. I have a question though. What about the flavoring? Does it have any? Does, does it mess up the flavoring with, with your? With your Not at all, man. Not huh? at all. Okay. It doesn't. Now you don't get any extra. You don't get no chemical taste. You get no charcoal taste. No burnt taste. It's nice. just all flavor that you pack in the bowl here. All flavor. So you that, don't get nothing extra. Just straight heat and flavor. That's, that's good it. to know. That's good to know. So what, what? What kind of flavoring are we working with today? All right. So today, put together a little mix. I like the mix. My flavors up. It's rare to catch me smoking one flavor unless it's something brand new, which is what we got for you today. Nice. We have some Jack the Ripper from Starbucks. Yeah. We got White Bear from Starbucks. White Bear. And we have some Ultimate from Hayes. And the Ultimate smells just how it sounds. Woo. Nice. I like that smell, man. That's what's that up. That carries up your lungs right away. Yeah, most definitely, most definitely. So as you can see here, we have that pack in three equal portions, 33% round the decimal points if you want, but I'm um, about 33% across the whole entire bowl using the Hookah John Ferris bowl, which allows you to load up your favorite heat management device, whether it's the Ottoman Ignis, or in this case, the Lotus. Cloud Lotus, I like which, is, which was one of the first heat management systems on the market as far as setup like this that allows you to place your coals inside of it mm -hmm. and distribute the heat across the entire bowl even so you get a even. you get an even cook of your shisha the whole way through that's nice i love that idea i mean once that came out i was like that i need to get one of those because those are like awesome yep yep and um the hookah which all you guys are probably looking at is like damn that thing's sexy <laughs> is the ottoman hookah in two um lovely lovely hookah made in turkey um, glass stainless steel parts. It's got a built-in diffuser in it. Comes with its own signature holes that you won't find on any other hookah besides this particular one. You hang it up right there. We sell them here. As you can see them behind our back. Behind, yeah, behind our back right now. And um, overall, I love this hookah. Um, I use crushed ice versus using cubes because it's easier for me to load up. But you don't have to just put ice in here. You can go with fruits. If you're uh, vegan, go with vegetables. It doesn't <laughs> matter. Put whatever you want in there, man. Make a nice little display about it. But why do I put the ice in here? Helps make the clouds a little bit denser, and I'm a bit of a cloud chaser. So, hey. And um, show us a little bit how it works. I mean, I want to see the clouds from this. All right, for sure, for sure, for sure. Real simple. Always handy dandy mouth tip. Remember to always use mouth tip, people. Ooh, it's nice and quiet, too. Nice, thick, puffy clouds, man. Can't beat it. Hey, you get this. Wanna give it, wanna give it a try? Yep, yep. Alright, so, right, so while he's taking that in, just give you a heads up what's inside of there. Like I told you earlier, we have the Starbuzz, Jack the Ripper, and White Bear mixed with some Haze Ultimate. So the Ultimate is explanatory, very strong mint. Um, not too strong to the point where it's unsmokable, but it's it's up there. Then you have Jack the Ripper, which is 
along the lines of like a red grape flavor. Very, very pungent on the flavor, very strong, but not too overpowering. And then the white bear, if you ever had Fumari's white gummy bear, it's a pineapple flavor. Similar in taste quality, but a little bit more enjoyable in my opinion. And truth be told, I'm not a big Starbucks fan, but those two flavors, Jack the Ripper and White Bear, I'm enjoying them a lot. I love it. I mean, I, you can actually taste the different flavors. You know, like one doesn't overpower the next. And that's what I like. I like how you just, you know, find the perfect flavor to get that perfect mix. So, so what, what, what's this thing here on top for? All right, so the Lotus comes in two parts. You have the actual piece that sits on top of your, your your bowl, mm -hmm. which is this bottom piece, that's where the coals go. Mm -hmm. And then up top is the lid. Also, it's your vents and where you actually manage the heat. So when you have all your lids closed, it keeps all the heat inside of the bowl. Keeps it all circulating inside, no heat escapes. Open the vents up some, heat's able to escape, allows the device to cool down and therefore give you a cooler smoke in the process if it's too harsh for you. Now, uh, quick question. So you told me that this is from Hookah John? Yes. Now, why would I use this one and not the other one that uh, that also comes with a Lotus? I mean, are there differences between that or? Well, I actually have one with me. Bam. Now, this is known as the Cloud Samsara's Vitria Bowl. This was their second model of um, Samsara's bowls. The first model was made out of pure silicone and it was a good bowl for what it was but it had one really bad flaw. The spire in the middle would degrade over time and break down and you couldn't really smoke out of it after that. Oh, okay. um, so what they did, they went off, changed it up. Instead of having it a silicone inside, they went with a glass inside. Yeah. So. You load up your shisha like how you would with the previous Samsars, mm -hmm. and as you can see, it's got these little vents in it. What the vents are for is to help the airflow. So, so this you can take out the glass. glass? Yeah, you can take out the glass okay. by peeling off the silicone layer, the silicone sleeve, and boom, that's okay. the actual bowl itself. There you go. That's so, nice. Now, at the end of the day, I prefer smoking out of the Hookah John Ferris bowl simply because of the fact that it's a funnel bowl. It's brain dead to use, brain dead to set up, and you don't really have to worry about the extra cleaning or the taking out the sleeve and putting back in the sleeves so like that, how you would with the um, Samsara's bowl. But that's not to say the Samsara's bowl is bad. Right. It's a really good bowl also. I mean, it's really good. Like if you're trying to smoke new flavors, trying to get a new flavor profile, yeah. you want to use this bowl because of the airflow it keeps more air going through the hoop and therefore you get more flavor coming out i love all of this now i have a, another question that people have been asking me like this smoke that's in there um do we have these vents to put the smoke out do you normally take out the smoke or do you what? yeah man you want to purge it like anytime like okay you we've been sitting here chit chatting for a minute right okay. and that's been old smoke in there now you don't want to breathe in old smoke that's not to say old smoke is bad for you it's just going to give you a bad taste so all you really got to do is just Blow into your hose. And then you clear it out. And you clear it out. Nice. And it gets your and it, and it get your ready for a brand new perk, for a brand new puff, and you're good to go. You just sit back. Yeah, I'm loving that flavor. Fresh flavors, that's all you gotta get, man. That's that's beautiful. All right, so the dry versus the juicy debate. Again, it's a personal preference, I think, bro. So, when you have your Starbucks, when you have your Starbucks um, tobaccos, they're juicy, then they're not juicy. It really depends. Like a, some, it really depends on the batch. But they're a mild, a mildly juicy um, brand. So as you can see, we have the Fumari here. Nice. That's my favorite. Yes, you told me. <laughs> so and as you can see, if any of you guys are familiar with the Fumari, it's um, it's very juicy, very juicy. And some people tell you, oh, you know, when you take out your, when you take out the tobacco you're going to use, put it in a paper towel, squeeze it out, and it'll give you a better smoke. That's not necessarily true, because what people aren't telling you also is that the juices help with the longevity of your smoke sessions. If you're using a standard ceramic mod bowl that most hookahs come with these days that have the little 
they look like um you ever use an egyptian clay bowl or anything like that or let's say a bowl similar to this from maya they have the holes in the bottom so why people are telling you to drain some juices of because the juices drip down here and yes. get in the water that's what i was talking to you last time right and some people say oh that's good because it helps flavor the water not necessarily true um if anything it's helping to dry out your your session quick so i would normally recommend people if you're going to be using a juicier flavor you want to go with a funnel style bowl funnel mm -hmm. right. and what funnel style bowls are simply one of these here right. or one of these here so if it stays here and it doesn't go through the hole so it stays right here correct all right perfect helps keep your session juicier keeps it moisturized longer therefore your sessions last longer because you're not burning the tobacco itself you're burning or evaporating the molasses the glycerin that's on the tobacco that's what's giving it the flavor now here's another brand that's new to the market it's called the Vu. and it's a dark leaf and it's fine cut now fine cut what does that mean it means that bad boy has been chopped shredded diced and all kinds of other stuff i mean look look at how small these pieces are man. super small i mean this is like regular tobacco but it very looks like the best way to compare it is the coffee grinds. coffee there you go this is grind up mm -hmm. so being it so grind i mean is it better or is it, i mean tell me what's the good things and bad things are. okay one of the good things about it is you're able to get a lot of airflow through your bowl to your hookah and everything else um takes heat well so you don't have to use as much heat as you would normally use with other darker leaf tobaccos um let's see here what else is another good benefit for it and what about the flavor oh the flavor the flavor profile the flavor profile is going to be around the same as yeah. if it's with uh, any other cut of tobacco it's just that the only negatives would probably be the fact that it is so finely cut and therefore you don't pack it like how you would normally use pack the other darker leaf tobaccos. So you get a you get a pretty decent flavor profile, even with it being so finely cut. And um and that's only just benefits you in the long run. Not benefits you if you're a hoop if you're a hoop enthusiast, you know, because most people smoke just for the sake of smoking. When I smoke, I like for the flavor. Definitely, definitely. So anytime I can get a session that's gives me full flavor from start to finish. I'm gonna go with it, and that's what I'm seeing the beginning of the little with this, with with it being cut so fine. Let me ask you. Uh, uh, it's it's not really a, sm a smart question, but a lot of people still ask me this. Do you actually inhale it to your lungs? Should you keep it in your mouth? How do you smoke a hookah? For people who are just trying this for the first time. For me, it's like I've taken a deep breath. So I used to play. I used to play instruments. Play baritone when I was in high school, you know, and that's a big instrument that you need a lot of lung capacity for. So when I'm pulling, I feel like I'm pulling from a diaphragm. And it seems like I fill up my entire lungs with it. I let it sit for like a couple seconds and I exhale, yeah, yeah. you know? But it's just mostly so that I can taste everything. But I'm not necessarily inhaling to fill up my lungs. I'm inhaling because I'm like, oh man, this tastes amazing. And then when I'm exhaling, I'm like, oh, it tastes amazing also. Because you get, like when you mix your flavors, Yeah. You tend to get one flavor on the front end when you're inhaling, that's then you get another flavor on the exhale. And you know? that's when you're mixing it right. <laughs> yeah, that's when you're mixing it right, of course, of course. Yeah. So that's partly, I think that's probably why I, like, I, I feel like I take a lung hit versus right. a mouth hit, if you will. Yeah, because yeah. uh, I've heard that, um, well, this is like kind of the history. They used to smoke these right after you eat. And then yeah. you get the, like the flavoring you know, of the food comes out because you get that sweet flavoring of the tobacco. It helps with the digestion, yeah, it helps yeah. to relax you, helps to get the flow, the juices flowing, Ease the, eases your digestive system along. Right. And let me ask you a controversial question. A lot of people are afraid to smoke hookah because they say it's bad for you. They like smoking 50 cigarettes. Not true. So explain. Okay, so anybody that's seen anything on cigarettes or anything like that, or cigars for that matter, know that that's a lot of carcinogens. Carcinogens. Right. Yeah, so you got a lot of extra stuff besides tobacco inside the cigarettes right. that are really bad for you. And one thing off the bat that I can tell you without a doubt that does not occur when smoking hookah is the tar, it's, it's tar buildup in your lungs. Oh, okay. Because the main thing that this does that yes. tobacco doesn't do, it steams it versus burning it. When you're lighting a cigarette, right. you start off with a stick of cigarette about this big, right. and then when you're done, it's gone. Why? Because it's burning up. 
not into the air, but into your lungs and into your mouth. That's with the cigarette. Now, with tobacco, I mean, with the, with the shisha or the tobacco that you use in your hookah, you're not necessarily lighting anything on fire. You are getting smoke from it, but you're not lighting anything on fire. Right. So, for instance, I say we've been smoking, let's say, around 10, 20 minutes or so, right? Right. Now, if I was to lift up the lotus here and you look inside this bowl, you take the lid off so it's easier that way. All right. What do you see in there? Yeah, I see the tobacco in there too, but I thought that, but yeah, I see that. But it hasn't really diminished in size mm -hmm. since we packed it, right? It's the same thing. Now, imagine if that was a cigarette. We'll probably be on our 10th cigarette or back Yeah, now. that's correct. Okay. Yeah, that's correct. I mean, you see a lot of a lot of people has been has been saying about you know I'm gonna try stop smoking hookah um, because you know it's, it has tobacco. Now I know you guys also have products that are tobacco free, right? Yeah, correct. You can use tea leaves. You can use the shiazo stones, oh. or which is which is basically like a pour stone. They put the same ingredients that they would on on the tobacco on the stones, and it absorbs it. You pack it in your bowl, not the same way you would pack your tobacco or tea leaves, right. but similar. Right. And you use your heat management device for your full and you smoke it like how you would um, tobacco. And that's tobacco list. So you're getting no nicotine. You're getting, yeah, no nicotine. Because really, I was about to say no tar, but there's no tar anyway. That's correct. Right. Because cool. it doesn't burn anything. What's that that looks like wax and you put it around? Oh, that's from, um, I believe the company's called um, Cloud9 yeah. or True Clouds, one of the two. But it's like a it's like a cream. Yeah. I, I haven't tried it yet. But from what I've heard, it performs like how the shisha would. Oh, okay. And then some people have been known to use a thin layer of the of the cream right. and then put a thin layer of the tobacco on it just to give it a different like kick to it. Oh. Yeah. So that's good. That's yeah. good. good to know. Yeah, because I see a lot of people also like chop it up. Mm -hmm. uh, you can chop it up also, or is it better just to yeah. use scissors? Because no, you you're actually cutting the tobacco itself, right? Yeah, you're cutting like regardless of what method you use, whether it's whether you use your hands, right. scissors, or a knife, yeah. you're chopping up the tobacco. I started off doing that to get rid of the stems and right. some of the um, packaging that I would receive. Like our Fokker is known for having some stems in their stuff, pays to a degree. Um, I haven't smoked Alchemist in a while. And I remember seeing some stems in there. Right. But you normally see stems in a lot of darker leaf tobacco. Dark Except for this. I don't know how they do it. Yeah, that don't But see. you don't get no <laughs> stems in here at no all. at all. I noticed that. Um, so, yeah. Like, I started off by doing that just to try to get rid of the stems. But then I started noticing, like, hey, man, I'm getting a little bit better pulls on my um, on my bowls. Right. Huh. Let me see. Let me pack a bowl without it being chopped up. Let me pack a bowl with it being chopped up. Let me do my compare and contrast. And just from me doing that, I've noticed that I've seen to get a better airflow, better pools. So how long have you been smoking? I'm about five, six years now. Five, six years. So I mean, you, you got your experience on the meat there. Now, I noticed there with the Umari, mm -hmm. it comes in a package, right? So you can actually mix it in the package itself, right? Just like... Yeah, like you can, like all, like to to keep it on 100 with you. Right. Most tobaccos come in packages like this. Right. What I mean is you have your can and inside the can would be a package like this right. with the tobacco inside the can. So you mix it first with your hands and then you mm -hmm. take it out. Take it out, boom, like that. All right. With the Fumari, instead of having the can and like extra packaging, they just have it in your baggie here. You can mix it right in here, take scoop it out, boom, right in your bowl, you're good to go. With the Starbuzz, you have your packaging on the inside of the can, then your and then the flavor, you have to mix it up, take it out, whatever, how you, how you prepare, prepare it, yes. and go, how I do mine, I just open the can up, take out the packaging, place it inside the can, chop it up, and I'm done. And so whenever I'm ready to use use it, I just scoop it out, and I'm good to go. Or I'd rather I stir it up first. There you go. Then I scoop it out. All right, that's that's cool, man. I mean, I'll, I'm loving all these new, new things that are coming out, but I'm dying to try all these new flavors. Now, what's your favorite flavor? I mean, like, if you were to make uh, like a perfect mix, what would you recommend these guys to try out? My perfect mix. The mix I mess with on the heaviest. Yes. Haze Cucumberita. Cucumber? Yes. What? Yes. All right. Cucumberita mixed with Social Smokes, Watermelon Chill. Watermelon Chill, nice. And you can leave it at that and you'll be fine. But what I started doing recently is going with Alfakers 
blueberry and mint or blueberry by itself. So I love blueberry. That's my favorite. Either or, you're good to go. You mix them. You mix them in evenly. I would probably say, yeah, mix them in evenly. Go about 33.33 percent on all of them. Right. Mix it in using using your favorite bowl, your favorite heat management device, whether it's a Lotus Ottoman or the or traditional with the foil with um, aluminum foil. Pack the bowl, get everything going, smoke, and enjoy. That's my favorite mix. All right. Um, I've been known to do other mixes involving pomegranate mm -hmm. because that by far, I don't care what anybody says, I don't care what anybody out there in the internet or out there in the world <laughs> says, our Falkers pomegranate, whether pomegranate by itself right. or the sweet pomegranate in a special edition line, mm -hmm. those two happen, those two to me are the best mixers, period. Because a lot of people, like, they tell me it's good to go with one mint, a fruit, and something else. Like you can, you get a little That's bit so of, basic. Yeah. Let's get strange. Right. Let's go with some Viceroy chai <laughs> with some blueberry. Or I, I wanted to try that. I never tried that. Oh, that is delicious. It's delicious. You get such, like it's like, let me just tell you how Viceroy chai tastes. Right. It's basically oatmeal cookies, man. It's delicious. That's what it reminds me of. It reminds me of cookies. Like freshly baked cookies. And I love cookies. And then you throw some blueberry on there. Right. Get yourself a blueberry cookie. <gasps> Delicious. Something totally new. I like that. I like exactly, that. Exactly, man. Like that. You don't put no mint on it, no nothing. Just boom, boom, boom. Right. It's delicious. Or let's get even more strange, right? Right. Let's go with a pink lemonade flavor from Hayes, five cents a cup. Pink lemonade. I mean, I never tried that. You see, I never even heard of these damn flavors. Man, yo, that's why you had the hookah place. I know. We man. got the flavors. They got everything up in here, man. 1384 Northwest 29th Street, Miami, Florida, 33142. Come check us out. Better check them out. Um, so yeah, you go with the five cents a cup. Right. Mix that with some kiwi. Let's go with kiwi garden from the special edition line also from Alpha Kier. Nice. And polish it off with some Tokyo Spice, which is from Starbuzz's oh, vintage. Spice? What's yeah. that? It's, it's from Starbuzz's yeah. vintage line. It's their dark leaf line. Now, it's different than other dark leaves. Mm -hmm. If you were to take it out the bag and just have it in your hand, you go, oh man, this looks like, um, this looks like Alchemist or, or um, what's the other brand, Trifectus. But, it's a lot juicier, so that you can either pack it fluffy or pack it dense. Because with most dark leaf tobaccos, you get the back, you pack them dense. Yeah. And for some odd reason, it feels like when you pack it dense, you're able to like keep the bowl going that much longer. So like your coals will die out, but the bowl is still going. So you can put like another wrap of coals on there, you're good to go, and still get full flavor. That's awesome. Now I have another another question again that I get asked a lot. Should I go with a glass hookah or your traditional old style hookah? What you got back here? Like, what should I do? I mean, again, it's a personal preference type thing. But I always, I say like this, if it's your first hookah, the very first one you ever purchase, the first one you ever buy in your life, right? go with something traditional. So like something like right there, what you got the Starbucks? Yeah, like something with Starbucks. Anything with a base similar to something like this. Nice. Anything that comes with something like that, that's like your traditional style. You'll find them from like a good company to start off with is Kalimamo. You can't beat them. They've been around for years and years and years. I mean, you're good to go with these things. I mean, they'll last you forever. I bought my first KM nearly four years ago. It is still thumping. What I mean by thumping is it still smokes like a champ. I can pack it up, load it up, smoke it right now, and it will still smoke. <laughs> Guaranteed. I have a question. Listen, I was just thinking about what you were saying. Now, with the glass hookahs, if you go with pure glass, no metal in it, because I heard, you know, the metal also, like, has something to do with the flavor. It can, like... Yeah, it can kind of, it can kind of work the flavors a little bit. There you go. So, if I go with a pure glass, now I'm upgrading my, my hookah. If you go pure glass... Yes. ...and you want the best bang for your buck... <clears throat> I'm only saying this because I have five different glass hookahs from different brands. Right. The Dashini Skyline. That bad boy is awesome. It's ridiculous. I mean, it is dumb quiet, number one. Because this is one thing that you'll notice. On your traditional style hookahs, they kind of rumble. Yeah. 
<laughs> you hear all that going and you're like, whoa, what is that? It's <laughs> like a bomb. Exactly. Yeah. Especially if you're watching TV or mm-hmm. if you're playing some Madden. He's that a Madden fan, as you can see. Yeah. <laughs> it can be distracting. Definitely. But with the Dashini Skyline, I can literally have it sitting on my shoulder with my ear pressed up to the base and I still won't hear it. That's how quiet it is. That's what I'm talking about. The baby. Yeah. Nice and quiet. Seriously. And it smokes, oh my God, so good. But because it is all glass, this is the thing, this is the caveat with glass. You get a pure hit, meaning that most of the time, I say about 90% of the time, when you take a hit Mm -hmm. from a hookah that's made of all glass, you get full flavor profile. That's what I'm talking about. And some people may not be used to it. So it can make you cough. It can like give you a really big head rush. What about staying hydrated about the head rush design? Oh well, quick fix to that is always with some water, some Gatorade, some tea, whatever you like your favorite taste of beverage. Right, right, right. You know? So keep that on hand. I love the metal parts in there. Okay. Yeah. That's not the I know we just had an election recently, you know, America <laughs> and all that other good stuff. But yo, when it comes to like some of the glass products that America makes, it's kinda bad. I'm not gonna I'm not not trying to not trying to beat up everybody. Yo, Zahara. Your Z70, I dig it, I love it. I've had one shatter, but that was totally my fault. But other than that, love your hookahs. But yo, I've, um, the Dashini Skyline, the Ottoman here, I've knocked them around while I've cleaned them, while I was setting them up. Mm-hmm. No cracks, no shatters. And I mean on the tiniest pieces, like for the Dashini, on the stem, that's the thinnest part of the hookah, right. the down stem. No breaks. Nice. I've knocked your thing around in the same time, you mm-hmm. know? Um, but glass as a whole, it's a gift that curse. Very beautiful. Mm-hmm. You'll get mad compliments about it. Tell me about it. But if you don't take care of it, it's gonna break down. Yeah, it's on maintenance. Now, uh, another thing, of course, because people like they want to try hookah, but they're kind of intimidated. You know, they see this little piece right here. I see a lot of people use the coals. It's you know started automatically. What are those called again? Those quick coals? lights. Quick lights. Now, you recommend these over quick lights, right? Hands down, all day, every day. Only time I recommend using quick lights is if you're out on the beach. Right. And even then, I would recommend going with a coconut styled quick light, something that's um, got some coconut shells in it. The ones that I know for a fact on the market right now are the Starbuzz um, natural quick lights. Right. You still kind of get a bit of a headache with them, but it's not as prevalent as with other brands, with other kinds. And um, yeah, they're perfect, perfect going on the beach or anything like that. And you can't bring something to light your coconut coals with you. So light up two of those, put them in your bowl, put them in your lotus, you're good to go. And that's just with the, that's with those quick lights. But I recommend coconut coals at every chance I get. Coconut, yeah. I definitely, I've been using only coconut right now. And it's a big change. I mean, I love it. Now, cut off the show a little uh, shorter, but um. Give, give me some little tips or something you want to like let the people out there who are trying hookah for the first time, you know, so they don't feel so intimidated. All right. So we were talking about glass breaking, right? Right. A quick way to fix that would be like, well, not even to fix that, but a one way to mediate that um, problem is if you're using ice in your base, right. you want to put some water in your base first before you put the ice because you can do something that's known as shocking the glass, where it will shatter on you the minute you put ice in there. Oh, yeah, yeah. So you want to temper the glass first by adding in a little bit of water to it first, first so that the temperature will rise gradually rather than all of a sudden, boom, and then the moment you tap it over something, it's gonna break. Um, for those of you that's not, and that hasn't broken glass experience like that, but you're just carrying it around, you can get like a little rubber guard for your base around the bottoms here. Like how I have something that I have here. Oh yeah, this, uh, this rubber also. Mm-hmm. Nice. Or you can get something that comes that you would see on like a KM. It's like this rubber foot pad that wraps around the base. If you use that, that helps with the knocking and that way you don't have to worry about shattering the glass. Um, hoses, because we did not talk about hoses. That's correct, you're right about that. Very important. What, what kind of hoses is silicone? Silicone. All right. Very easy to clean. You can go soap and water, or you can go lemon juice and water. Either or, both ways will get it clean. Um, but most people that buy hookahs to start off, they get a hose that comes something like this. 
Yes, I have, I, have, I have a problem with that. I always have to clean it, and there's like black stuff always coming out of it. That's rust, bro. You see, that's no. what I'm talking about. And you don't get that problem with this. No, you don't. No, of course not. But that's not to say these hoses are bad. All right. You just have to replace them more often. Okay. I recommend replacing hose. Like if you have a hose like this, I recommend replacing these between two to three months because they rust on the inside because there's a metal inlet. And any kind of moisture, condensation that stays in there will rust the holes out, and that's bad for you. Yeah, definitely. All right? You don't want to in inhale that. Yeah, I got rid of those right away. I, I got me just silicone. Mm -hmm. so that's what it Or, and if you don't want to go with a silicone hose, right. because most silicone hoses are a bit on the pricey side, you can pass me any of the thunder hoses. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, these, the, 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 the problem with these, because I know what, which one these are, they look kind of cheap, you know, because they're like, they look plasticky, and, and you're like, I want something that's like more like. So that's the packaging of it, right? It's not cheap. These things are quality personified. Right. And I only say this because there's a certain company on the market, I'm not going to name names, right. that has copied this design and has sold it here because it was hard for us in America to get this particular product here because it's made in Brazil. Oh, okay. um, It's called Thunder, by the way, for those that don't know. Thunder. And they, instead of using silicone or like the metal inlays or anything like that, they right. use a vinyl material. Vinyl. Vinyl. Right. And um, you clean them just like how you would with silicone and they're hella durable because it's, all, it's basically plastic parts. But they're heavy duty, and you get nice sessions out of them, no matter what hookah you're using. You use them from the smallest hookah to your biggest hookah. If you smoke with one of these hoses, you're good to go. If you keep going with the standard, remember you will have to replace it more often than you will with the other two types of hoses that are on the market. Right. Um, but that's on you. You're the consumer. Do with what your money has you feel. Only get offer suggestions. And I have, I have one little question that like beginners always ask me: How should I fill up the water level? Real simple. This is a rule of thumb. It does not matter what hookah you have. It doesn't matter how big the hookah is. No matter how small it is, an inch or an inch and a half. What I mean. This is your down stem. See my little index finger here. This is your water level. Bang. It does not matter what size hookah it is. This is what you. This is how high you want it to go. In any size hookah. So an inch. Yeah. All right. No higher, no lower. Inch, inch and a half. That's it. That's it. I like that. Keep it simple. Keep it simple. Kiss principle. Keep it simple, stupid. <laughs> all right. Well, I really enjoy all the information you've been giving us. I mean, you guys have like all the best products, and I, li I like all this information because I can actually come to my beginners and tell them, look, watch the video. Dave is letting you know that hookah can be fun and easy. You don't have to complicate things. Just get you like a small hookah. You can start off with a small one. You can go with something like this, or you can go with one of them big hookahs back here that we have. But you just gotta enjoy it. And the flavors, they got so many flavors for you to try. I mean, you got endless choice. A wall of possibilities. A wall, quite literally. I'm telling you, a wall. <laughs> but um, David, it's nice having you here in DMZ Likewise, TV. Man. And stay tuned, maybe we'll do another show with him. If you guys have any questions you know write the questions below you know dmc tv don't forget to subscribe